on that uh, and uh, heavy part production. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, I'm going to give it this kind of lecture about heavy pork production. Uh, first of all, I will introduce you what do I mean with heavy ports, and then I will concentrate it mostly on the plus minus annihilation, and I will talk about single differential, uh, differential massless uh, cross-section first, and then massive, just to show you the difference. I will talk about this, uh, uh, you have heard that many, many times by now, factorization theorem, I won't probably have any time to talk about a non-perturbative effect, so you will have to go through the slides by yourself. And then I conclude that the conclusion is not the end of it all. There's something else waiting for you just after the conclusion, okay? So keep that in mind. We will talk probably later during the, the recap. So, uh, heavy works. What do I... What are heavy quarks? What is heavy? Heavy with respect to what? Okay. The typical scale in QCD is lambda QCD is 250 MeV. Okay. So people think that heavy is charm or bottom or top since the mass that goes from uh, it's dead. Okay. The mass goes from 1.5 GV to 175 GV. You see that the scale of getting heavier and heavier is, uh, you know, increase while while you go you move down in this column, and at the same time you see that the mass over lambda QCD gets bigger and bigger. This means that you are getting further and further away from non-perturbative regime, okay? Because you are getting away from lambda QCD when you don't know what to do. You don't know how to, to deal with QCD because it enters a non-perturbative regime, so you don't know how to compute it. So you expect that things go better and better as you go to higher mass. And finally, even the value of alpha strong gets smaller and smaller. So your perturbative expansion gets more and more perturbative, okay? So you can trust this a little better because the expansion parameter gets smaller and smaller. Having said that, you can talk a lot about heavy quotes. Heavy quotes is a huge, uh, you know, it's a huge subject. You can talk about production and decay, CKM matrix, uh, oscillation, CP violation, spin measurement. Uh, probably Laura, Reina, uh, she will talk about that. Uh, intrinsic uh, uh, heavy quark uh, into the protons. Uh, bound state of heavy quarks. Higgs boson discovery, they almost appear everywhere when you, when you try to discover new physics. <coughs> but I won't talk about all of that. The aim, my aim here is to give you the tools to understand what's going on, okay? So I will teach you how to walk so that you can run. Is it clear? I, won't, I will try to explain you everything and give you all the details. So, be prepared, this is quite a technical, a technical lecture. All the formula are there, so you can go back and uh, take a look at them by yourself. But uh, my goal is to give you all the tools, okay? <coughs> I hope that you appreciate that. Before that, a couple of points, very, uh, uh, let's say some kind of uh, 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 why people is, was and is so interested in, in, B, in B physics. I've called that B quark curves, okay? And the reason is just that uh, at, at several machines, the plus and minus annihilation machine, gamma proton machine, PP bar machine, there, always, there has always been a problem with B, B quarks. Always, 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 at least till a couple of years ago. Okay, why that? Well, why that? I, I'm going to tell you why that. You see that these are the data for C production, and these are the curves, the theoretical curves, and everything goes well. You go to the B, these are the data, and this is the theoretical predict, uh, prediction. Remember that this is a logarithmic scale, so we are out by, by several factors, okay? A factor of three or four. Or four. Gamma production is the same. These are the data, 
uh, these are the data, this is the next uh, the, the prediction. We are out by a factor of three. And again, Tevatron, uh, the data, the theoretical production, if you take the ratio, we are out by a factor of three again. So it's, it's, it's really a problem because I, will, I said before that you expect that when you go from the charm to the bottom, things should, should get better because you enter and you have a heavier object, so you expect things to go better. Instead, it's not like that. What's happening? What's going wrong? Yeah. Okay. And again, I, just to uh, the, the, the final, uh, the, um, the most recent data, let's say, about uh, B plus production and CDF and disease Trevaton. These are the data. Again, this is a theoretical prediction with the error band. If, you plot, if I plot that, uh, if I plot the ratio, again, I'm around 2.9, so I'm out of a factor of 3. It's, it's, it's quite a big factor. But the title of this slide, as, uh, uh, I put the title, the big book, puzzle. Why puzzle? Well, because these data are out. If I take a look to other data, for example, B jet production, meaning that I, I look at the jet, if there is a B, okay, you Whatever is the means that you use to say that there is a B, but if there is a B, I plot in this plot the uh, transverse energy. Things here are in good agreement with the theory. So this is really a puzzle. Sometimes it goes wrong, sometimes it goes right. So what's happening? Okay, here we start the technical lecture. Okay, so let's start with something that you are supposed to know very well. Okay. Let's start with massless object, E plus E minus that goes in QQ bar. This is the leading order, okay? I just, I haven't put here the Z just to give you very, very simple stuff, okay? Otherwise, you can put here the Z, no, no problem at all. Next leading order, you have heard that many, many times, you produce a real gluon, you have to attach it to both legs. You have virtual correction, triangles, but virtual correction on the external leg too. So, Let's start writing the amplitude. This is the part that is the, uh, the, uh, the electron part, okay? You, I think you, all of you should read, should know what it is. Am I right or am I wrong, okay? And another thing that I'm quite pissed off that, uh, you know, of listening, oh, you know, I'm an experimentalist, so I'm not supposed to understand this kind of thing. Okay, uh, this is absolutely not true, okay? Everybody in this room has to understand at the end everything, okay? So even if you are an experimentalist, you have to follow everything, and you have to go through everything, okay? I hope I've been myself, I made myself, myself clear. Having said that, you have to square the amplitude, and you can write, uh, okay, H mu is just the atomic part, whatever happens here, okay? Whatever, everything, you, I call it H mu. So when I do the square, I can build two tensor, the tensor that is built out of this, of this one, and the tensor that is built out of H. There is a gauge invariance for the photon. If you don't know what it is, you came after during the next 10 days and you ask me and I will tell you how it works. They say that both the lepton and the hadronic part has to, to, has to um, when they are contracted with the momentum of the, of the, of the, of the photo, has to, uh, they have to go to zero. So if I'm not interested in any angle, and this is just the case of this lecture, I I'm not interested in any angle, okay? So I produce a quark, I don't care the direction of the quark, okay? What I'm gonna measure is gonna be the energy of this quark, whatever is the, the direction, okay? So this is the case. It means that you can build this tensor only with a, with a vector Q, okay, at the end of the day because you won't care about the direction of P prime of K. So if you want to write a tensor just that respects this identity, okay, the general form is this one, very, very simple. So that you can put the square of this matrix in this form. If you don't see how to go from here, from there to here, there is a wonderful, this is the most important line in my, in my, in my lectures, okay? When you see this line, it means that you have to start working and do things by yourself, okay? This is a lecture, so you have to do exercise. And let's start doing a competition. And the competition is gonna be that 
Okay, it is easy one point exercise because it's very, very simple. Let's see at the end of the 10 days who's going to score more points, okay? Who's going to be the first one coming to me with a solution of all the problems that I'm going to give, okay? So this is a one point problem, okay? Don't do that now because you, won't, you, you will miss what, what, is for, what follows. And then this is very, very easy. So uh, obviously the points, the winner takes it all, okay? So 10 points, 20 points, go to the first one. The second one is the loser. Gets How much nothing. do they get if they buy a mistake in your lecture? Pardon? <laughs> How much do they get if they buy a mistake? Uh, they come to you and you buy them a, 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 a drink. Whatever they like, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, something else that probably not all of you have ever done, so I push you to do this calculation once in your life, okay? To compute the cross-section, you have to square the matrix element. I've seen that, you, uh, I've shown you that before. There are a few factors in front, the energy of the electron, the difference of velocity, that is just a factor of two, because uh, they are uh, uh, relativistic. And there is the phase space. The phase space, you know, everybody knows the expression of the phase space. Two particle, three particle, n particle, you just iterate this expression. But I am ready to bet that not every, all of you are able to compute the phase space in d dimension. Since I'm gonna, I, I will have around divergences, I'm forced to, to use d dimension, okay? So, please, work out the expression, okay? Write these integrals in terms of the variable here, v and, and, phi, and, and the phi angle, the, the angle, the polar angles, for example, of the vector p, write these big expression in terms of only two variables, okay, only two variables, compute the extreme of integration in d dimension. Here epsilon is whatever number you like, okay. D is four minus epsilon in this calculation, but uh, it's not an expansion in epsilon. They are exact expression, okay. So epsilon can be any number. And again, d phi three, work out the expression, okay, and, and uh, write this Phase space element in terms of two objects that you already met before, because Vuki talked many, many times about x1 and x2. So, x1 and x2, please memorize them now, because till the end of this lecture, we're going to talk about x1 and x2. x1 and x2 is the fraction of energy that one quark has with respect to the beam. So, x1 is the fraction of the first quark. X2 is the fraction of the, of the third of the second pool. X3 is the fraction of the gluon. Is it clear? Since they sum up to Q, X3 is not independent. Okay? And again, this is something that you have to keep in mind. <coughs> X1 goes to 1, and you can check from this expression, when the when the gluon, the momentum of the gluon become parallel to the other quark. X2 goes to 1 when the momentum of the gluon with the anti quark, let's say. Uh, X2 goes to 1 when the momentum of the gluon gets parallel to the quark. And X1 and X2, both at the same time, goes to 1 when the gluon becomes soft. Remember that, okay? And here, 10 points, I would say. So let's see who gets the first 10 points out of that, okay? If I'm giving you this exercise, it means that you can do that. You can do that, okay? They're not too difficult. You don't need anything else except your brain, and <clears throat> okay? You need that first, and piece of paper and the pen, okay? Having said that, let's compute the double differential cross-section in the massless case. Double differential means two, dif two differential, D dx1, dx2, okay? So, I say I want the energy of the first uh, of the first quark between 0 0.5 and 0 0.55, and the second one between 0 0.6 and 0 0.65. Okay, boom, this is the number. And what do you discover? Well, you discover something that you might probably you know. If you don't know, you know that you have to go through this expression. Okay, so you discover that this is the real uh, the Born contribution plus the virtual. Okay. The virtual because this is just a QQ bar state, so there is no gluon. And you, you know that the virtual are divergent, are divergent, okay? And please remember that the cross section to produce a, 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 a couple, a, a quark and an, an anti quark, okay? That's it, a quark and an anti quark is a quantity that is divergent, it's not.